Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to GitOpsCon and welcome to my talk or uh, progressive delivery with the Kubernetes Gateway API. I am Sanskar. I'm a Flux and Flagger maintainer. I'm also a software engineer at Vworks, and I am also slightly involved with the Gateway project as well. So let's start by discussing progressive delivery. Uh, what is progressive delivery? Progressive delivery is the practice of gradually rolling out new software to your users. So you make sure that if the stuff is bad, if like the application or the new changes are already and buggy, the potential impact is very limited. So it's basically to limit the disaster radius uh, for when things can explode. Um, it is like the next step in this, in your CI CD pipeline. Um, your CI CD pipeline merges the code, generates the artifact, and makes sure all your community clusters are running the latest artifact. Uh, but progressively make sure that the latest artifact does not actually uh, blow your cluster up. Uh, how does it ensure that your cluster doesn't blow up? Uh, you select a bunch of users that you want to test the stuff on and based on their usage and the, uh, uh, the performance of the new application, uh, you make sure you made a, you make a decision. Um, so let's take a look at the several strategies, uh, that come with procrastinative degree. Uh, first is, uh, AB testing. AB testing is, uh, cookie based routing. So you have a bunch of beta users uh, that you identify using a particular header or cookie that is embedded in the request. And you expose all your new changes first to your beta users, make sure that they get to use it and based on their usage and the performance of the new changes app in, the, in your application, uh, you decide whether or not to expose it to the rest of users. Next is blue-green deployments. Uh, blue-green deployments, are basically load testing uh, deployments, you could say in a sense, because it doesn't actually, the new application never actually gets exposed to your uh, users. Uh, you have your current application running and then you have a new application running alongside that. And then you generate some artificial traffic uh, and based on the performance of the serving those artificial requests, you decide whether or not to replace this new application uh, and take down this old application. And lastly, we have a uh, canary releases. Canary releases is, I think, what most people have in mind when they think of progressive delivery. Uh, so let's take a, a much more deeper look into how canary releases work. Right. Um, so the problem is basically that you have version one of your application, which is up and running, it's performing fine. And now you have version two and you want to deploy it, but you want to do it in a progressive delivery fashion. You don't want to jump from step one to step six, uh, because that would be bad. Because if version two is not as good as we hoped it to be, it can lead to all sorts of problems. So instead of taking such a long jump, let's take a smaller one and go to step two. In step two, we can see that in, we have left the version one pods up and running, but we have another deployment, which is running version two, the green circle. Uh, that's running version two. and we can see that also see that 5% of our traffic is now going to version two of our application and the rest of the 95% is going to version one. So approximately 5% of your users are now on the version two of your application, which means that based on their usage, you can evaluate the performance of version two and decide whether or not it's behaving as you intended it to. And you can do that by checking metrics, right? You can go to your Prometheus or Grafana dashboard and you can have metrics that kind of correlate to your SLOs and KPIs and see if version two is hitting all of those SLOs and KPIs. If it is indeed hitting those SLOs, uh, we can take the step uh, three. We can go to step three and increase traffic, right? Now we're gonna go to 10%. And then eventually we can keep going, keep going, you know, reward some more traffic, go to 15%, check metrics again, then do the same thing again, go to 25%, check metrics again, then we can keep going up to 50% or any defined threshold. 50% is just an example here, but let's say 50% uh, is a threshold for us. Uh, what does this threshold signify? Uh, it signifies something called promotion. So when version two of your application can easily handle or is knowingly handling 50% of your traffic, uh, which means that it is a good application version, right? It's It seems to be performing fine. So we can go ahead and take down version one of, uh, of our application, replace it with version two. Right? And that's exactly what we do in step four. And this is basically the start of promotion. What we're doing is we're taking out the version one pods and replacing them with version two pods. And once we have done that entire orchestra, you have performed a canary release. 
Now let me uh, introduce Flagger to you all here. Uh, Flagger is a Kubernetes progressive delivery operator. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means that it's a Kubernetes operator that automates the entire process that I just explained in the previous slide for you for free. Uh, it hooks into your networking stack and your uh, observability stack. Uh, and then it basically automates each and every step of the each and every step of the diagram that I explained in the previous slide. Uh, it has a lot of uh, support. Uh, in the forms of integrations. Uh, it has support for Istio, Linkerd, Nginx, uh, a bunch of other networking tools like service meshes and ingresses, but all that's kind of irrelevant because now that Gateway API is out um, and the entire Kubernetes network networking ecosystem is moving towards Gateway API and Flagger is fully compatible with that. Um, Flagger also has a lot of support for other metric providers like Prometheus, Influx, CloudWatch, and it has a, a really powerful uh, metric template system which you can use to write queries that fit your SLOs and KPIs. Now that we have a fair idea of what can releases or progressive delivery is and how Flagger works, um, let's take a look at Gateway API. So Gateway API is the next generation of Kubernetes routing and load balancing APIs. Uh, it's basically the successor to Ingress uh, because Ingress really needed a successor. Um, and it learns from all the pitfalls and all the mistakes uh, that Ingress has. Um, it's designed in a way to be expressive and extensible. You can add your own stuff to it. Uh, and it has a very standardized API for doing that. Um, and more importantly, it has a role-oriented resource model, which means that each resource that Gateway API provides uh, fulfills a specific role. Uh, there exists a resource for each role that you can think about when you're dealing with Kubernetes. Um, and I think most importantly, it offers something that Ingress failed to do was uh, portability across vendors. Because when you implement a gateway API, um, it's very easy to switch between gateway API implementations because these, the spec is so well-defined and so standardized, and there is no ambiguity. Uh, with Ingress, you had like 100,000 different custom annotations that each Ingress provider has on their own, um, which made it really hard to switch between Ingresses. Uh, and they also went GA uh, recently, like a couple of months back. So now they have several APIs that are V1. So that means that they are considered mature production ready. So let's take a look at some of these resources that Gateway API provides. Um, so first we have a Gateway class. A gateway class is basically a representation of a gateway API implementation. So a gateway API, there are like several gateway API implementations, Istio, Linkerd, Contour. Uh, but the way it works is that you, when you're provisioning clusters, for example, uh, your infrastructure provider will probably install the gateway API implementation for you. And the gateway class, a gateway class object is just like a, a record of saying that this is the gateway API implementation that's been installed. Um, a gateway is basically a load balancer. It's like a layer on top of load balancer where you can define all your load balancer configuration, like uh, listeners and what kind of traffic do you want to listen to or like DNS configuration or TLS configuration. This is something that your cluster admin would normally deal with, right? Because uh, a load balancer is not going to be something that uh, application developers or SRs going to deal with. It's like someone who has cluster admin access who can actually expose traffic, uh, for, uh, who can actually expose like applications to the outside world would do that. So cluster admins have uh, a very direct role to gateway. And then we have SGP routes, which are directed to application developers. Because application developers at the end of the day are pushing code changes, right? And it's their code that's getting deployed and getting exposed by services. HTTP routes are like a layer uh, that divides the ingress uh, API. So instead of having all of the load balancing configuration and the routing configuration in one, uh, we have a gateway where we have the load balancer configuration and then we have HTTP route where we have only routing configuration where we determine which request should go to which service based on their path or headers, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we have a fair idea of how what gateway API is well, let's take a look on how they both work together. Um, so I have a very simple YAML file here. It says kind HTTP route and it says simple split. What it has is basically two backends, full v1 and full v2. And the most important thing that Flagger is concerned, like Flagger, like only is only concerned with this weight field, uh, honestly, because this is the field that 
configures what amount of service gets what amount of traffic. So Flagger just continuously updates this, these weight fields, right? And based on these weight fields, you can get traffic to split between your new version and your old version as well. And now it's time for a good old fashioned demo where we'll see Flagger and Gateway API working together to do a canary release. So here I have a canary object. Uh, this is the main API that Flagger deals with. Uh, this defines all your canary release uh, configuration. So as you can see here, we have our target ref, which basically defines which deployment to perform the canary release for, some service configuration, um, the gateway that the generated HTTP routes will attach itself to. Uh, and then here we have uh, the analysis configuration, which is really the backbone of uh, how can releases work. So here we say that we want to take a step forward every 15 seconds. Uh, threshold is basically like the number of failed checks that we're going to tolerate before we say that, okay, this application is bad. So let's roll back, you know, uh, max weight is the threshold at which we decide that this application is good. So we should promote it. Um, and then step weight is basically the step to take at every, uh, the, the weight to increase at every step. So you start from 10% and then the, in the next step, so at like at 15 seconds, you take the next step and you increase the weight to 20%. And then uh, another 15 seconds pass by and then you increase this weight by another 10%, uh, which means 30%. And you keep doing that until you reach 50%. And at 50%, uh, if everything seems fine, that's when you can go ahead with the promotion. But if everything is not fine and while doing this, you have like, 10 failed metric checks uh, where it did not satisfy uh, your criteria. Then we some we do something called rollback where we do not promote the canary release, but we just kill the canary release. So metrics is where you define all your uh, metric queries that correlate to your SLOs. So here we have uh, a metric named error rate, uh, which is referencing to another object, uh, which actually contains the query. So let's take a look at that. So error rate uh, is a so error rate is something called a metric template. Metric templates are basically a way to let you define custom queries that you want to run. Um, so here we define type Prometheus because there can be other providers as well and the Prometheus server. And this is the actual query that Flagger will run. And Flagger has a powerful templating mechanism where it can inject information like uh, namespace targets or even like custom information that you can define in the canary itself. Um, so this is the error rate metric template, which basically calculates the rate at which we are experiencing five status 500s. And then we have another metric template here, which is latency, which is, is essentially me uh, me measuring the request uh, request latency. Um, so we reference those here in our metrics uh, section of the canary. Uh, so each step, uh, whenever it tries to increase the weight before that, it will run those queries and see if it's actually uh, satisfying the threshold. So here we have, sat, we have defined a threshold range max one, basically means that the error rate should not be higher than 1%. If it's higher than 1%, that means it's bad. So, you know, that, that, that would count as a failed check, but if it's lower than one, that count as a successful check. Uh, similarly, latency should not be more than 0 0.5 seconds. If it's more than 0 0.5 seconds, that's bad. Right? So. And these results are added together. So if one of them fails, the entire metric check fails. So that increments the threshold value, right? So these results are added together. You can't order them together. So that's very important to consider. So all, all criteria should be met uh, before we actually, you know, promote the canary. Uh, webhooks are interesting. Uh, so Flagger has a very powerful webhook mechanism where it can run a lot of webhooks at different um, phases of the canary release at different uh, life cycle steps. So here uh, you can run a you can run a webhook request uh, before the rollout actually starts. So before Flagger actually starts shifting weight to the to the new deployment, it's gonna wait for this webhook to actually return a two hundred status code. And as long as it doesn't, Flagger is gonna keep waiting. Flagger is going to keep waiting and it's not going to divert any traffic to the new deployment, even though the new deployment has been uh, deployed by the CD pipeline. Uh, similarly, you can do the same with promotion. It's not, it's, it's not going to promote the, the new application uh, unless it gets a 200 status back from the webhook request. Uh, and then you can run like a bunch of load tests during the life cycle of the canary release. Uh, so it's really a very powerful way to extend your uh, canary release. Now let's take a look at all of this in action together. 
So I have um, already installed these metric templates and this canary API. Um, as you can see, this is the status. Uh, I have a watch here, uh, which is watching the status of the canary uh, object every 0 0.5 seconds. And so if you can see here, I have two uh, I have two deployments, pod info and pod info primary. Pod info primary is our primary deployment and pod info is our primary deployment. Uh, so both of them are at 6.0.2 right now, as you can see here. I'm going to go ahead and trigger a canary release. And the way you can do that is by changing anything in the pod template spec, but I'm just going to go and deploy a new version. Uh, so here, yeah, here you go. So now, as you can see, uh, my canary deployment, my new deployment is at 6.0.3. That means that Flagger should now do a uh, canary release. As you can see, we have a, a progressing phase here, which basically means that Flagger has detected that there is a, that there has been a change and that it needs to perform a canary release. So we're going to wait for that to happen. So let's go back to our browser. And as you can see, I'm at 6.0.2 right now. Okay, that's fine. Let's wait for the canary release to kick off. So now our pod info pod is now up and healthy. It's been scaled back up by a uh, flagger. So now we're gonna uh, increase the weight by 10%. So as you can see, canary weight is 10% here and you can indeed check the HTTP route as well to confirm that flagger is actually manipulating the, the weights. As you can see here, uh, pod info primary is getting 90% of the weight and pod info canary is getting 10% of the weight, uh, right? So that means 10% of all requests are right now going to the canary's, uh, canary deployment that's running 6.0.3. Um, and we can check that here, right? We can keep reloading this until we hit 6.0.3. Yep, there you go. So now we have 6.0.3, which means that some of our users are now going to start experiencing 6.0.3. And Flagger is going to keep increasing the weight again and again. So right now it's at 40% until we reach 50%. Once we reach 50%, it's going to start something called promotion, where it's going to start scaling down the canary deployment and start scaling up the primary deployment. But the primary deployment is going to be at the new version, not at the old version. And that's it. That's the demo. Uh, we can wait for... And as you can see, uh, Flagger is promoting the can you release right now. And we should be seeing a uh, point for primary to be at 6.0.3, which means uh, that our primary deployment is now running the new version of our application, which is what we initially wanted. I just want to talk a couple of more minutes about some new release stuff that we have with Flagger and Gateway API. So recently added support for can you release with session affinity? which means that your canary releases won't switch back and forth between uh, users randomly. Uh, users once exposed to new changes will remain on that version uh, because of session affinity. And we also added support for blue-green traffic mirroring where you can have blue-green deployments but have the request being mirrored to the canary deployment as well. I just want to talk a couple more minutes about some new release stuff that we have in Flagger, uh, in particular with Gateway API. So we recently added support for canary releases with session affinity, which means that you can combine canary releases with the power of session affinity so that users don't get randomly routed to different versions of, of your application. So once they are on the new version of the application, they remain on the new version of the application. Uh, we think this is a pretty exciting feature. And I recommend all of you all to try it out. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to enable it. You can go to the documentation and check it out. It's just like two lines of configuration and you can uh, have such an affinity for free. Um, we also had support for blue green traffic mirroring, uh, which means that you can mirror uh, all the requests to both deployments, but only have responses being returned from one. If that's the kind of thing that uh, if like, if your application is completely stateless and it's not making any write operations, uh, you can mirror all the requests to both versions of your application. 
uh, if you want to compare uh, some kind of metrics or something like that. Thank you. Um, check out Flagger uh, at these links, uh, and there are a couple of resources as well uh, that you can learn more about uh, what I, uh, about this kind of stuff that I talked about. Uh, and I hope to see you all next time at GitOpsCon. Have a good night. Bye-bye.